All right, welcome back. It is Wine Wednesday. Look at that great picture there. I love that. So if you're curious for a knowledge of wine, look no further than a new sommelier program bringing wine education right here to us in Michigan. The Baldwin Restaurant Group invites you to learn all about the history of winemaking, general wine tasting notes, and the food pairing process. And to tell us more about the program, we are joined by sommelier and manager of operations for the Baldwin Restaurant. We have Jeff Baldwin with us. Thank Hi, you so morning. much for joining. And you brought a lot of stuff with you today. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. I, I brought five wines total, and these wines we're actually going to be serving on our American Wine Education class coming up on August 22nd. And so, so tell us a little about the education class. Obviously, you let people taste wine, but give us mm -hmm. an overall general feel of what goes into that evening. Of course. Yeah. So it's for just a nice date night, or we've had sommeliers attend the class and come out with learning something. You're we try to show off a, a different area of the world at each class, and it's a lot of fun. We have food pairings, we have wine, we pair with our chef team, and we work really hard to provide an amazing experience. It looks amazing. It does look amazing. So take us through some of like the basic steps. So if I were to sign up, what are some of the first things I'd learn? Want to try to yeah. taste some wine while we do it? Yeah, right. yeah. So this is a Riesling from California, but it's actually a German winemaker that does it. So. Um, when you taste the wine, I want you to, we call it painting the glass. So paint the glass with the wine, and then you can put it up to your nose. And I don't know if you smell any like orange or any floral notes. Um, give Ooh, it a taste. Well, pear. I, I mean, with a schnoz like mine, I should smell all that. <laughs> <laughs> I do get a little bit of orange. Uh, yeah, yeah, floral. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're, they're good qualities for a Riesling. Taste it. Mm. Wow. Sweet edge on that one. Yep, and, it, and it's actually a semi-dry style. So with this wine, I don't know if you feel in the front of your palate, it's like kind of watery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's wine with a lot of freshness or acidity. And that's going to react really well with something that might take water out of your mouth, which would be salt, right? So that's just one example of something that you might learn in the class. and. Uh, it's, wow, that's a delicious wine. It is Sorry. fantastic. It is really good. <laughs> I usually don't uh, tend to go for a white wine, but this one I definitely would. It's a yeah. tasty one. It yeah. is really delicious. It's it's sweeter than, you know, than it smells. Like it, when yeah. you first smell it, you, don't, you know. It's yeah, and there's like a little effervescence to finish with it. Um, mm -hmm. And you could also do a comparable pairing, and you could add water to this, like if you had a really strong, rich uh, dish um, and you wanted to cut that flavor, you could add some tomato to this, and it would be like... Unbelievable. All right, right, so I gotta know. So, what's a like a this bottle? What would this bottle go for? Is this like super high end? Is it uh, medium? Like you know, the road? we don't try to break the wallet too bad. We we try to stay between wines that retail between thirty and fifty dollars. Okay, yeah. attainable. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. And then, so. why did you choose this wine glass to go with that wine? Good question. So, there are wines that grapes, I should say, that um, go well in certain glasses. So. If, this is a Riesling Sauvignon Blanc glass. And if I was to pour it in the other glass, for example, it would taste completely different. Interesting. Yeah. How so? How does so that work? It's the way the, the bouquet comes out of the glass, right? Because what we have is grape juice that gets in contact with oxygen that releases a bouquet. Mm -hmm. um, and so if it's in this glass, it's, the bouquet is going to be different, right? And then the way that it enters your palate is also going to be different, too. So for the next wine. Yep. Um, <laughs> and which one is this? So this is a Pinot Noir. It is the most beautiful wine out of the lineup, in my opinion. This is where I so, spill on myself because it's red. <laughs> All right. So Ilahi Pinot Noir, um, it means earth, and it's um, because they're trying to get the, the truest expression, like some winemakers have a lot of intervention mm -hmm. in the wine whenever they age it in oak or they do manipulation. This wine, they didn't. They wanted the, the terroir, as we say, to speak. Okay, so and I it, noticed with this one we were painting the glass, but obviously with, with the Pinot Noir, yeah. we're, what is yeah. this so called? I wanted to swirl the glass just because it's fun and okay. because I can pronounce the bouquet a little bit more. There's two different ways to do it, you know, so. Um, now I've noticed, do I have the right wine? Because my glass is different than yours. I would, I would switch it up a little bit. Go to that one right there. All right. Yeah. Okay, all right. And, uh, Ours look the same. Okay, cheers, okay. Kylie. Cheers. <laughs> oh, nobody wants to cheers me. Sorry, cheers, Chris. There you go. All right, there you go. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, Chris. <laughs> Wow. That is delicious wow. too. 
and the, the sensation of the flavor, we define it as complexity, right? So I don't know if you're still tasting the wine after you swallow it. It's mm -hmm. like, wow, I get these really nice red berry fruits, right? Really nice ripe berry fruits. Um, how long that sensation lasts dictates kind of, you know, how good the wine is, I guess. And it also is how good of a f way it pairs with food. And what would right? you pair with this? Um, I would try to target maybe like lamb or pork with this dish. Um, Cause you always want to match the body of the wine with the body of the protein. And this wine, it may seem light body, but the alcohol in it is kind of high. And that's what we define as body in the wine world. So what about this? Can I pair this with it? Would this be perfect <laughs> to pair with that? It would, it would, it would. It would. And, and, and please, if anybody, does anybody <laughs> want to taste? Uh, so I'm curious too, Jeff, as far as like seasons go, mm -hmm. um, is this a wine that you would primarily, like if you were having, you know, friends over or having guests, would you just stick to the whites because it is still summer or can you go with like a richer red wine? I mean, have fun with it, okay. right? Like if, if mom's coming over and she only drinks red or, you know, it, it, it's just how, whatever experience you want to create. You know, if, if you're trying to be like us and, you know, pair wine with food, you, you know, we can do it much more formal, mm -hmm. but it all depends on the audience. Okay. Yeah, yeah. If mom's coming yeah, over, yeah. you gotta stock up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do. Yeah, for now, sure. I feel like the first one was chilled, and this one, is this one not chilled, the second one that we just it, had? Yeah, I, I did my best to cool it off before, uh, you know, the car ride <laughs> here, you know, it was a little warmer today, but... Um, so you yeah. normally serve it both chilled then? Yeah, I, so whites, you wanna try to stay in that, like, 56 degree parallel, and then, um, Reds, you want to try to be like 65, I would say, right okay. around. Okay. Um, and, and honestly, like any of our guests, they, they typically like it a little bit warmer mm -hmm. um, and their white's a little bit cooler. So it's, it's all preference. All okay. right. What's the third wine we have going here? All right. So this is a Cabernet and it actually is blended with a grape that has red pigment and juice. So if you didn't already know, uh, wine gets its color from its skin. And this wine is unique because the juice inside of the berry is also red. So they didn't have to let the skins stay in contact with the juice as long. So it's a very fresh tasting Cabernet. Hmm. Um, it's called Fiction. Fiction, Fiction. okay, Cheers. great name. Hmm. Oh, that one's yummy too. What do you guys think? <laughs> that one's yeah. yummy too. Yeah. <laughs> they're all yeah. good. They're all I mean, so good. But they're all you know, so different as well. My palate's pretty uh, immature when it comes to wine. Yeah. Um, so I do like them all, but yeah. Um, you can tell it definitely tastes like this one just feels more. It's got more like body to it or something. Yeah. It's got like more of a fuller like taste. Yeah. Well, they always say cab is king. Let, let's try a little experiment. Oh, sure. Here. Okay. Experiment. Um, Pass uh, the, I don't want to pass. <laughs> oh, yeah. She doesn't even yeah. like me touching her glass. Uh, I gotta uh, pass the cheese um, down to her. I would have been fine with oh, it. Oh, yes. another one. All right, so you felt that tingliness here. If she wants one down here. All right, Kylie. Kylie. Oh, oh, my Look at that. I balanced it on my cheese. Uh, so you felt that tingliness on the top mm -hmm. of your gums. That's tannin. That's the sensation of bitterness, right? Now a little bit of fat cuts through that. So take a bite of the cheese. And then go back to the cab. And go back to the cab. Mm-hmm. You know, notice that bitterness, that dryness, kind of dissipates. Right? It does. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's amazing. That's another mm -hmm. example of something you would learn in the class. Okay. Now, what's your uh, kind of view on decanters? Do you have to like let the wine breathe a lot before you drink it, or can you just pop it? The best thing about decanters, I always say, decant whenever you want, because it's only going to enhance the experience, right? Because what do we have inside these bottles? We have wine juice fermented that has been trapped in there and we want to release that aroma faster by decanting. So whether it's young, whether it's old, especially old, you want to try to decant it because it gets that expression of what the winemaker was going for. It gets that faster. Is that only for reds though? Or is that also for whites? Uh, whites as well. Really? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I didn't I, know that. If you want to enhance the aroma, if you want to enhance the bouquet, that's why you decant. Yeah. Oh, that's good to know because yeah. I've been decanting. I didn't know if it was frowned upon <laughs> yeah. in the uh, expert community. What about yourself? Tell us a little bit about your journey now. Uh, you know, how do you become like a small yay? <laughs> you know, I was the owner's son that um, 
Like well, wine? <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I didn't want to just come into the business and assume autonomy. You know, I wanted to bring a skill set. I wanted to bring a trade. And so I was very ambitious when I joined the company. I decided to register for the sommelier exam just six months prior to the exam taking place. Jeez. And uh, so I spent a lot of time with flashcards, a lot of time drinking. And <laughs> I, um, I passed, and then I created a sommelier program after that because I said, you know what? This was difficult, but if you're ambitious, you can do it. So now we we have 14 sommeliers in the company and we sponsored them to get their certification. So anytime that you come into one of our restaurants, Jay Baldwin's or Testabara, you're going to have a wine expert taking care of you. How about that? Love that. Yeah. So tell us a little bit more about the class. Is it a couple of sessions? How long does it go? Yeah. So there's three different events that we have coming up in the next couple months. So it's very exciting. So on the 22nd, we're doing the American Wine Education class. And then on the 24th, we started our first uh, Masterclass Chef series where we're actually getting hands-on with the guest and teaching them how to make raviolis oh, on August wow. 24th. Uh, and then finally, we do more formal wine events where we partner with a winemaker uh, September 25th. We partner with Trefeffin Winery, another Napa winery. And uh, that's where the, uh, the surf and turf comes out and we get a little more formal with our pairings and stuff like Very that. Very nice. Oh Make God. sure so fun. they yeah. roll the ravioli before they get into the wine. <laughs> yeah, it's sure. a little easier that way than Sometimes the other Sometimes it's way. a little bit of both. That's Sometimes right. yeah. you get a little red wine in the ravioli. <laughs> the ravioli gets sloppier and sloppier <laughs> as the right. class goes on. Oh my gosh, it gets That's fun. excellent. Sounds like a fantastic thing. Thank you so yeah. much for coming in this morning, yeah. Jeff. Thank we you. really appreciate it. it. This was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun. I enjoyed it just as much. One more piece of cheese for me because I can't resist. I love the cheese. That one's a little spicy, Chris. Yeah, well, yeah. I'll try it. Well, I'll let you one. know how it is on the other side of the break. We'll be back shortly on CBS News at 8. Cheers. Cheers.